So you know what they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So the tradition over here in Chicken, Alaska. Yes. Oh! It is 8 o'clock in the morning and welcome back to the channel. The nice weather of the last couple of days, it is gone. So we're back to rain. But um, anyway, a welcome here to uh, Dawson City, right here at the border between Canada and Alaska. And if you've seen the last video, then you know how I'm going to pay for my breakfast because I have these chips from the casino which are a oh, actual currency in town. So I should be able to buy breakfast with my gambling chips. The red ones are $5, these ones. And the pink ones are $2.50, I think. Yeah, $2.50. And they have different images on them. So you got the little lady. I don't know if you can see it, the Kangaroo girls. Yeah, well, the weather forecast did not say that, uh, that this was gonna happen. So uh, let's hope it will clear up later. Because well, the plan for today, I am going to cross real time this time into Alaska. So it's actually a really exciting day. And it's a day that I've been looking forward to for a really long time. Like a breakfast burrito, please. Um, and a cappuccino, please. What size would you like? As small. Well. 1935, please. Uh, Those are two and a half. Yeah. With my last gambling chips spent, <laughs> I think it's time to uh, leave Dawson. But before I do, I'm just going to fill up my extra tank. And now you're going to think, extra tank? What? I am so lucky because so far, this entire season, I have not been carrying extra fuel because Alaska's tank is, well, has been easily big enough to go wherever I wanted to. But things are obviously going to change a little bit in Alaska. Distances are just a bit bigger. And I might actually make it without bringing extra fuel, but then I have to ride, well, slowly basically, <laughs> and like really conserve my fuel and I don't know, ride like 70 kilometers per hour. And those are exactly the type of stretches that you just want to keep on going. So yeah, if I'll be riding 100, 110, then my fuel economy is obviously going to go down. And I don't think I'm going to make it. So I started looking for, just for this last bit, get uh, an extra fuel, uh, some extra fuel capacity. And uh, I met in this town here in Dawson yesterday, I met this Dutch rider. And he had carried, he got this rotor box, um, never been used, so I bought it of him. So this is a one gallon, which is almost four liters. And so I don't have the mounting system, so I can't mount it like properly, but I think it sits really nice here. And then I just have my bag on top. So I'm just gonna, today's kind of a test ride. I don't think I'll need it today, but I'm just gonna see if it kind of sits properly. Okay. First, I have to cross the river with a small ferry. There is no bridge on this, this side, so I have to take a ferry. Oh, wait. Oh, there it is, I think, on the other side. Morning!
Morning. There we go. And this stretch of road that I'll be taking towards the border with Alaska is called the Top of the World Highway. And it actually used to be completely paved somewhere in, or what was that? I don't know, decades ago, I think it was fully paved. And, uh, but they're not really keeping it that way. So it's now half paved, half gravel, I believe. I haven't seen anyone on this road the entire way. So I don't think there's actually a lot of people in the 40 mile. This is the river. And then, wait, oh, the road goes here. <laughs> How do cars even pass here? Not sure. No, huh? Is this the road? This is really cool, but am I right? I think so. If this is right, then this is the coolest road to a town ever. <laughs> like, main access road. I don't even think the car will fit through here, would it? This is really cool. And maybe. How do people get here? Maybe everybody is on motorbikes. I did not see this coming at all. The bridge. It's definitely not for cars. Maybe people walk? Oh, ow. No, I do see tire tracks, so I can't be far anymore. I see some houses appearing. <laughs> or oh, this is a this is a, oh, it's a church. The 40 mile St. James Anglican Mission. Wow. General store. Oh, I'm gonna have a little break here. Don't think the store is open. So I am officially now in the oldest town of the Yukon. So 40 mile was established in 1886. But before that, long before that, First Nations people already lived here. Just looking at the general store now. With some big moose antlers. 
doesn't look open. But yeah, First Nations people would come here because um, the big 40 mile caribou herd would cross the Yukon River here. So they would come here to hunt caribou and intercept the herd as it was crossing the river. Imagine a big caribou herd swimming across this river because <laughs> it is wide. It's not, not an easy river to cross, I'd say. It's also fast flowing. I think the mosquitoes here are even bigger than the ones. <laughs> <laughs> once in Dawson. These mosquitoes are just, they're, they're enormous. Super, super aggressive, look. Look how big they are. It's crazy. I do not know how people lived here in the past or how they live here now. <laughs> We're just constantly being attacked by all these huge mosquitoes. I. I don't know what the secret is, but I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> now I understand the tracks, the tire tracks that I saw. They come in here with quads. Makes sense. These tree roots <laughs> are making this a little bit bumpy. Okay. Yeah, this place definitely does not see a lot of visitors. <laughs> this is so much fun. Second bridge. So that was the the ride. One last look. The Yukon River. Oh, there must be somewhere here. See? Oh no, a bit further. Oh, it's right over there, see? Wow. <laughs> what a place for a border. Canada on this side. Alaska right over there. Pretty incredible. Kind of, uh, it's almost like one of those Chile Argentina borders right up in the Andes. Uh, this is not as high, but it's still amazing. Very strong wind though. It's trying to blow me off the mountain. Easy peasy, love and squeezy. And now I can finally say it, say it. <laughs> uh, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, but it's finally here. I can say it. Welcome to Alaska! <laughs> Entering Alaska time zone. I am here, I am in Alaska. You are home. My baby is home. <laughs> I made it, I made it. Oh, what a, what a cool feeling. What a cool feeling. I'm about uh, 28 kilometers still from kind of the first town. This 
saw that chicken. You saw it. It's just sitting. I almost hit it. Just sitting on the road. Didn't even move. I'm uh, pretty sure that was one of them birds. I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Chicken community. I'm here. I am in chicken. This is a downtown chicken with the cafe, a saloon, liquor store. <laughs> they have it all. I just love how there are just chickens everywhere. <laughs> Look, chickens. There's a chicken. So this is the bar in chicken. <laughs> Look at this. Hi, how are you doing? Can I ask you something? Yeah. I heard something about a cannon and Anything. underwear. <laughs> That's why it's all shredded. Right? So you eat. Blows out of here. You stick it in. Here is my kit to blow it off. And that is how you get the panties. There and there. Pull them out the back. You can't be a regular uh -huh. pair, it's gotta be the ones you have on. So you know what they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So the tradition over here in Chicken, Alaska, the women will blow up their panties and the men will leave their hats. But there's a couple of rules. So you're only allowed to blow up the panties that you are wearing. So you have to, with scissors, cut them through and then blow them up and then hang them on the ceiling. So, oh, okay, are. there we go. There's one side. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Scissors done. This is the cannon. It uh, uses black powder and the fuse to light it. And it's three squares of toilet paper. Okay, it's very precise measurement. <laughs> this definitely ranks high in the category yeah. most random things I've ever seen. <laughs> so, how many have you blown up? So far? Oh, thousands. Thousands. Oh. Alright, put them in. So I'm going to light it and run, yeah? Yes. Oh! <laughs> well, that was very random. I never thought that I would ever come to Alaska and blow up my panties but I guess it kind of fits this place because chicken is well as you probably got by now is quite a quirky little place and the name chicken actually stems from the fact that in the late 1800s the miners that were here looking for gold they kept themselves alive by eating ptarmigan which is a uh, well, now it's Alaska state bird. So when the town got established in 1902, they wanted to call the town Ptarmigan, but they didn't know how to spell it. <laughs> and they were worried that it would cause confusion. So instead, they called it chicken. <laughs> Which I think is absolutely hysterical. So this place is called chicken. And now I am on my way to a place called Tok. <laughs> well, I think Americans pronounce it as Tok, but come on, it is spelled as Tok. I think this is only really funny for Dutch people that I, I just went to chicken and now I'm going to Tok. <laughs> what a day. All right, let's keep going. I have arrived in Tok, Alaska. Let's find a place to stay for tonight. So this is uh, the cabin where I'll be staying tonight. Pretty, pretty neat place, I have to say. And well, I guess I entered Alaska with a bang. <laughs> What a random day. The cannon aside, it was awesome. I had a really beautiful ride. Um, I loved seeing the 40 mile place, top of the world highway. It was beautiful. Yeah, I am here in Alaska. I'm just really looking forward to everything that I'm gonna be able to see here. I think there's a lot of adventures coming up. I have a feeling, 
But uh, for now, I am going to take a little bit of a rest. So that was it for today. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and then I'll see you in the next video. 